My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hello, everybody. I am Lee Smith. I am the Productivity Architect with Upcycle Coaching, and I'm coming to you live from Reno, Nevada. Awesome. Where the hell is Reno, Nevada? I know where it is. Don't tell me where it is. But <laughs> a lot of people don't know where Reno is. How far is Reno from Tahoe? Reno from Tahoe, it's 35 minutes from my driveway to the lake. Are you serious? You're, so, you're serious. so lucky. We have to yeah. tax you more. You have, you have to pay more taxes. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> I'm so grateful that's in my backyard. And let me tell the rest of the world, I am much closer to San Francisco than I am to Las Vegas. Because Reno is in the northern part of Nevada. Las Vegas is in the southern part of Nevada. So I can say hello to my friends in Sacramento and San Francisco a lot easier than Las Vegas. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know why would any public speaker would want to move to Reno, but we're going to make an exception for you. Awesome. I don't know how you ended up in Reno. <laughs> Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> so listen, you, you use a lot of big words that scared the shit out of me when I looked at all your IGTV, talking about transformation, productivity, creativity, all of this. And you kind of, I have a weak heart, so I have to watch out when I go on your channel because I might just have a heart attack right oh, there. No. So let's, 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 let's dissect these things and tell us what do they mean so that way I'm a little bit more at ease because I thought I was a creative, but when I saw your some of your IGTV, I was like, damn, I'm not even doing anything. Like, I got to go do more. <laughs> oh, well, if I'm challenging and inspiring you to do that, that's awesome. And I feel like I am fulfilling my purpose, Vahid. That's awesome. Yes. Which word would you want to attack first? So let's talk about what is creating? What is being a creative and creating? What, 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 in what context are we talking? Absolutely. Well, by creating, I mean creating the life that you want to experience. Too many times, so many of us on the planet, we're just living day to day to day to day. And we are responding to what we've been conditioned to. We are reacting to the expectations around us. And we're not really stepping into the life that we want to live. The life that I want can be very different from the life that you want. And both you and I can both be victims of society, if you will, reacting to what we think society wants us to live. But I want to create the day that what matters most to me. And maybe a lot of us have gotten a better perspective because of COVID-19, because with the shut-in, we had this extra time in a sense to really think about what matters. So when you wake up in the morning, are you the type of person who wants to react to the alarm by hitting the snooze and going, oh, just a few more minutes? Or do you want to be the creator that hits that alarm, gets out of bed, ready to take on the day and saying, okay, I only have 24 hours today. What am I going to do with it? And that's what I mean by creating. Creating and in, in, intentionally using the time for what matters most to you. Does it mean being uber productive at work? You're making an extra call. You're, you're putting that extra oomph in your service to your clients. You're putting a little extra joy into the relationships that you encounter throughout the day. You're putting a little oomph in moving your body, the way that you stretch yourself and open yourself. Um, maybe it's, it's an extra oomph in what you consume for the day. Is there a webinar that you want, you're like, oh, that training is going to boost me even further. Or if I read this book, that next chapter is going to take me to that next level, whatever that happens to be. And maybe it's an eating, you know, as we're like, what's the next local restaurant that I want to support with my money and with my energy and that safe distancing that I got to do now. But it matters to me in my little piece of the economy. So that's part of the creation that you want. So many times we hear creatives and we think about marketing and things like that. That's not where I'm going. I'm talking about the everyday person instead of living moment to moment, just letting things happen to them and they react, really intentionally creating the day that you want to experience. And the difference is at the end of the day, if you're reacting, you're exhausted. Maybe you were busy and maybe you got some things done, but what did you really accomplish? When you are the creator of the day that you want, you feel more alive, you feel more in control, you feel more fulfilled. 
much love it. So I here's think. my question. What level of, because what you just described should be everybody's goal. Yes. That's the standard, right? I don't know why it's not. But let's talk about reality. Reality is that is not everybody's goal. We're striving to get everybody to want that as part of their journey and part of one of their vision boards. So here is my question. When you do coaching and when you talk to people, what needs to happen for individuals to come to that level of awareness where they seek you out or other coaches or other mentors or some avenue to be able to attain what they want? Because if it was a standard, then everybody will be talking about it. Everybody will be doing it. So my question is, what does it take for individuals to have that spark to say, okay, I am not being, I'm being reactive, not proactive. Right, right. So for them, a lot of, a lot of people that I work with or that I love working with, they're the ones who are moving through life and things are good. They have a good job. They have a good family. They have a, a good home. They even have a good vacation. And the days feel pretty good, but something underneath, something's missing. And they're thinking, I don't really have anything to complain about. Really, I have a good life. So why am I feeling like there's something more? And not more in, oh, I want more things, uh, anything like that. But there's like, ah, oh, is this really as good as it gets? Are you talking about fulfillment? Or when you say more? Are we talking about like emotional more, not yeah. physical? Yeah. And if it is emotional, what do you call that? I, it, it, in the emotional sense, it's definitely the more, uh, or more fulfillment. And so when they're, they're, they're feeling something is lacking and they can't really put their mind to it, their tongue to it, right? Really define that word. Sometimes the word fulfillment will come to them. Like, I'm not feeling as a filler. I'm not feeling as alive as I want to feel and I've been doing everything that everybody's telling me to do and again life is good but there's something ah oh, why do I feel a little bit lost a little bit stuck but what more should I be seeking because I have it so much better than so many other people so who am I to complain and I'm like can we have a conversation please because I don't want you feeling that way I want you to feel like yeah this is good and you know what I want to take my life deeper. I want my life to have meaning. And it doesn't mean you've got to go out and be this massive difference maker. You can be a difference maker in your relationship with your inner circle, whether that's with your spouse and your kids, or maybe your friends, or even uh, your team, if you're, you know, if you have a team of employees um, that you're working with. So it can be, you know, right here, right now, right where your world is. For those who want to go bigger, oh, let's do it. I'm right there with you too. But I don't want people to think, oh, she's not for me because she's talking about the big difference maker. No, I'm talking about right here, right now, in your every day, where can you take things a little bit deeper so that you feel more alive? You're stepping up in that potential and the little differences that we make end up having bigger ramifications than we ever thought. I mean, listen, that's called compound uh, effect. Yes. You, you do one thing better every single day, you're going to get good at it. And, you know, just like playing poker, playing chess, or, or going and running, anything you do for a long period of time, if you're conscious about what you're doing and your level of awareness goes up, you'll be able to improve on it and overexpand the period of time, obviously. Listen, if you and I have a heart attack, when we go to hospital, chances are we're looking for the oldest looking guy that's the doctor. That's the guy who we want. That we want. I want that guy to do the surgery, not because of his looks. Is because he has probably done it more often and more repetitive than the guy who's forty years old, good-looking doctor with right. the six packs and everything else. I'm all like, this guy was in the gym, not in the hospital. I need the guy who was in the hospital. You know, so absolutely, experience matters. Oh, big time, big time. So here's my question. I mean, you touched up on it. So it's not complaining. It's just that you want more fulfillment. Is there a limit to the fulfillment? No. Can you cap out? I don't think so. I don't think so because we ourselves 
have unlimited Because that's borderline that. greedy. If you can't cap it and you always want it, I mean, if it's a good thing, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. That That's debatable. But sure. that's borderline greedy. But it's okay. It's you being selfish for fulfillment. I guess in the process of fulfillment, you must be helping another human being Absolutely. or doing something good. So they can be in max. Yes, exactly. And that's why it's unlimited because fulfillment isn't going to come from just doing something for ourselves. We can We can do something for ourselves in the sense of improvement. But we won't continue that growth and feeling that sense of fulfillment unless we're giving and contributing to others. And then that's where things really become unlimited because we can't grow unless we give. And again, I'm not talking big ideas, folks. We can talk big ideas, but I'm talking little. You know, if I can give more into my relationship, I let me tell you about it. I've been married for 19 years. And there were there was a three-year period where my marriage was down spiraling to the point where three years ago, it was literally on its hospice. I had no emotion whatsoever in that marriage. I'm like, this is the end. I just, I just don't know how to snip that cord because I've been in it for so long. And I was like, Oh, oh my God, I'm just, I'm just dying. You look like you're 28 years old. How is that 19 years? <laughs> you, you got you, you got you at a young age. He got you know, lucky. And, that, and that's another part, too. That's another benefit. When you have the joy, when you have the fulfillment, when you're feeling fully alive, you will feel younger, look younger, be younger, right? <laughs> it's, amazing. It's, a, it's amazing. I want to do an interview with him. I want him <laughs> to say that. <laughs> He's like, listen, the first 16 years I was suffering, but the last three years has been good. I'm trying to make up for it. It's good. Yeah, well the, well, the first, I mean, the first 12, 13 years, yeah, they were great. And then we hit this period where so much of life was happening and we diverged so far apart from one another. I, I say it like he was so far, I couldn't see the horizon and, and, the, and the troubles in our marriage were so deep, I couldn't see the bottom, you know, but I had when I... And I, and I suffered a massive depression at the time. That was a part of it too. And when I realized this is not who I am, I, being in depression, that's not me. And it's a miserable state of life. It's not where I want to be. I want and I, in really, the question that landed in my space was, Lee, what makes you happy? And I went, oh my God. I have no freaking idea. That's how lost I was in my day to day. I was just doing the day to day, being the wife, being the mom, being the stepmom, taking care of the house. I completely lost who I was, if, I, if I'm to be fully honest with you. And when I hit that threshold of like, oh my gosh, how long have I been doing this? And how much longer am I going to waste my life in this miserable state? I said, no more. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going on a quest to figure out what makes me happy. I know what makes my husband happy. I know how to appease my stepson. We had a very strained relationship at the time. I know how to bring joy to my daughter, but looking at myself in the mirror, I was clueless. And I said, enough is enough is enough. And that's the type of people I'm looking for. The people who are like, I'm just in the day to day. Enough is enough is enough. What is this more I'm trying to feel? So for me, it was Lee, what makes you happy? And I'm like, laughter. I need to find laughter. So I started on the couch because I was still in depression, right? I've, I'll just be fully honest here. I was on the couch watching reruns of Friends because what gets better than Friends sitcom? You got 10 seasons, you know, thousands of lines. And even though I knew them all, I would watch them over and over and over again because they would make me laugh. Then I was very blessed at the time that uh, during the time of that depression, I also had a local comedy troupe that every Friday night they were doing an improv show. I was in the third row every Friday night watching them, getting my laughter on. And then I intentionally, and here's another key, I intentionally surrounded myself with people I knew had an, a massive sense of humor. And all I had to do was be in their space. And then through that laughter, it took several months, but through that laughter, the light broke through the cake of massive mud and depression that I had been fighting for three years. And that light was joy. It found me again. And it slowly enveloped me. And soon, that joy asked me a question, Lee, what are you going to do with me? Because that joy was a gift given to me. And that type of gift, it's not meant for you to keep to yourself. You can't be selfish with it. It will run away from you.
So I knew the joy wasn't meant for me. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this? I need to tell my story. I've been, I've experienced so much in life and I have learned through personal development. And I love all of these posts from Napoleon Hill because that's one of my favorite authors. Vahid. And I'm like, I do have my definite sense of purpose. I've been given this gift for for professional speaking, which I absolutely love doing. I have a story to share that I know people can relate to. And I have this message. Do you want to be a reactor? Or do you want to be a creator? It really depends on how do you see yourself. When you see yourself stuck and surrounded by other people's expectations or even expectations of yourself, and you're not able to live to it, and you just feel busy and reacting, reacting, reacting all the time, Again, you're exhausted and maybe you get a little bit done, but you're like, really? Is this what life is about? That's not why you were put on the planet. No, you are meant to be creator. See yourself at the beginning, know what you want out of life and who you need to be to get that. And then you set the priorities, you design the life that you love living and you go and you do it. So that's where I took the joy and now I'm sharing it with others. Love it. Definitely thank you for not being selfish and sharing it with everybody. Love it. Um, couple of comments. I found out the secret to marriage. You just listen to your wife and you just say, yes, ma'am. That's the secret. <laughs> That's the fastest. You do not need to be creative in that department. You just say yes and 99.99% of problems will go away. So, you know, that's that, that's the end of that. You just, you know, I don't know how it is in your household, but that's how it happens over here, right? Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, the reaction creation part really plays a part in that too, because I could react to my husband's demands or his moods at the time, which were unpredictable, right? Or I can create, you know what, I'm going to create the space where all I see is the good. Because I was in the reacting where all I saw was the, the, the bad, the bad, the bad, right? And then I was complaining, complaining, reacting, complaining, reacting, complaining. And I'm like, no, enough is enough. I fell in love with this man years ago. How could that be completely gone? No, I'm going to challenge myself. If I'm going to, if I'm going to say I gave it all I got, I have to be, have that integrity with myself, right? It's not. Me, do you know I how many girls... At nighttime, they sleep and they cry themselves to sleep because they don't have his phone number. Do you know how many girls do that? Good looking man like that, you're lucky. You better do everything, whatever it takes. Because a lot, I'm just messing. I never met the guy, but I, I with this kind <laughs> of introduction, I should meet him. <laughs> I was one of those. I he has not paid me to say this. He has not paid me to say this. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. No, but I did. I did create the space where I was going to be honest with myself. I was going to look for the good in him. And I tell you what, 2019 was amazing. We had the most laughter because laughter is so key, right? I'm like, we have laughed more in that one year than I think all the previous years of marriage where, you know, yeah, we laughed a little bit, but now we laugh so much more. And being again in creation, you want to create that space for gratitude, think, focusing on what you do have not on what you don't have right again that's the creating because when you when you focus on what you don't have you're going to find yourself reacting a whole lot more and then you want to stay in that creative space i think it's, it's just a mindset of, of abundance you already Absolutely. have enough and 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 napoleon hill talked about it i think being resourceful is very very important and a lot of times maybe we don't take it seriously because so many individuals complain, oh, I don't have this camera. I don't have a studio. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm like, you got a phone. Put out the video. If your content is good, it don't look matter how it looks. It could be in, in, in 480. I mean, it could be the lowest resolution. And some of the videos you see from like 10 years ago, or when you look at Napoleon Hill's videos on YouTube, they're not, they're black and white. Right. from like god knows how many years ago 50 60 years ago and we listen to it because we don't give a shit how napoleon Hill looks we don't care how the video looks i just need the audio because that's the message i'm not gonna judge the messenger because the messenger doesn't look good right so to me it's the message that you gotta go after it's not all that, you know that's how it is so to me it's like being resourceful with what you got and that's what it is so many people have big homes and they're in depression, yeah. where some people have a 600 square foot apartment that they're renting and they're happy. Yes. So it has nothing to do with the home or the house. It has to do with inside. So 
I think that's, uh, I think it's every person's own discovery. Because you, you can say that to somebody, but unless they don't internalize it. L listen, the minute you become a student, the teacher will be there. And the teacher sometimes is an, a person on Instagram. It could be a good book. It could be a holy book. It could be whatever. It could be your best friend. It could be parents. It could be the minute you get that on mindset that I'm a student in this journey and I want to learn and not act like you know everything. Right. I think things will change. Absolutely. At least that's my reflection. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't mind if you disagree. I do not disagree. I wholeheartedly agree. You know, and when it comes to being resourceful and you know, thinking about I can versus I can't, you know, either way, we might be like, I don't know how the how is going to happen, but we have to start with the belief of I can. And belief, it it's ingrained and conditioned within us in the first eight years of our life, right? It's forming all these subconscious storytelling that we carry on the rest of our lives. And what's amazing, you know, that, that might sound like bad news. You're like, oh, well, that's why I'm so stuck, you know, because my parents told me I would, you know, amount to nothing. You know, I couldn't do anything right, you know, so who am I to, to become a millionaire? And it's like, oh, you want to become a millionaire? You need to change the story in your head. Well, Lee, that, you that definitely does not happen in, well, that doesn't really happen in maybe immigrant cultures. Maybe that happens to other people because most of predominantly among the immigrants that we have in my neighborhood, in my block, in LA, listen, every mom and dad is telling you, you better become a millionaire. We did not waste our time to get our butts to come from a different country, go through four different oceans, get your ass over here, put food on the table for your ass to just be normal. You better get your shit together. So to me, it's like, uh, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, yeah, it's like one of those things that you better get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, they're telling you, you better make it or else half the time you're scared shitless. Why, why you need to get it going worse than that? So I don't know. I mean, you know, that's what I was telling my wife the other day. I said, how do people get depressions? She's like, what do you mean? I was like, can I wish to get some? Because I'm really, I'm a workaholic. Can I stay home? for like a couple of weeks and just be on the couch and sleep? Is that what depression is? She's like, don't be retarded. What are you talking about? I'm more like, I, like, can I experience depression without being depressed? Is that possible? Because I want to experience it one time to see how could you just be sitting there watching TV? Like, I'm more like, I'm running out of hours throughout the day. I'm trying to borrow other people's hours. Right. And so many people I see that they're just, they got raw talent. I know they got a higher IQ than myself. I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, I would give anything to have your IQ and your talent. And I could be doing so much with it, right? right. And then yeah, they're not doing it. So I, I, for some reason, I don't have the mental capacity to understand what that means. So I was like, right. what do we got to do for me to understand? Because then I could talk about it more. I could, I could internalize it better versus me just reading some bullshit stuff on depression on just books i gotta internal i gotta know what it is how do we get rid of it because yeah. apparently it's a big it's a big hurdle for a lot of the younger generations sure sure can i share my thoughts on that go ahead yeah when it comes to de depression you know for an or even any any type of negative state but depression in i think to get inside of that is to you have to you have to let go of any desire. You have to be in a state of confusion in the sense of, I don't know what I want. Because if you don't know what you want, you're just in this spot with no direction. So you can't even take a move forward. And in that, in that stuckness and in that uncertainty, you start losing motivation. And then you have to throw in the physiology you really want to get into that depressive state get in that physiology where you're just slumping over and you're just you're just breathing and you're just like i don't know what i want i just i just don't know and and you start going deeper with that 
because you know why you can't stop me because you know what you want and you're like okay and if the only way i'm going to get that is taking action over here and then taking this action over here and making this happen making that happen if i don't make those happen then what i want is not going to happen and but so Lee, that's not in my gene though i wasn't born with it no. so the question becomes doing what portion of my life or other people's lives how do we how do we learn those skills because there are skills i don't think i'm talented I'm skillful in a lot of areas. So skills are learnable and teachable. So we can we can give that knowledge of those skills to people. So I don't know. I'm one of the, we got to we got to hold somebody responsible for this shit that the younger people are, somebody needs to be responsible for us not learning it at the right age or at the right timing. I don't know if it's the parents, I don't know if it's the education system. I don't know it could be our culture, society, our country, I don't know. But I think the first thing is we need to admit that we got a problem. Second, Absolutely. we got to go fix the source. We may not change everything overnight. It might take 5, 10 years, but that's where I see like somebody needs to be doing something. I don't think I'm the right person for it. Sure. Well, I I hope I get to play a small part in that because I think when we come into the world as as babies and infants and then when we we get in those early stages where we're, we're finally able to communicate and now we're four and five years old and we start, you know, we have the imaginary play, right? We might even have an imaginary friend and, and our floor turns into lava and we're, we're climbing trees and going on safaris, all of that imagination, right? And then we start thinking about what do I want to be when I want to grow up? And, and we start envisioning like all of these possibilities. And I think, there, it's a combination of everything. It can be the parents. It can be outside relatives and friends. It can be the education. It can be the society. But start squishing that imagination, right? It, we get conditioned into, you got to go to school. You got to get a job. You got to work your 40 years. And it's like, that's such a lie. It's such a lie. It's a path. It's not the path. And it's certainly not the only path. And so with the with the education squishing the imagination and then we have i can't even show the phone because i'm speaking to you on the phone all that technology all that social media all of those distractions now we have all of this noise outside of us we start silencing the, the noise it's more like a whisper the inside of us right i heard a quote yesterday so often our heart whispers to us and at the same time, our head is screaming at us. So we don't, it doesn't have to be a, a magical age, but there needs to be a time, and you probably discover, discover this sometime along your journey, when you sat and you listened to that whisper in the heart, it started telling you, oh, this is what I want. You feel that desire. The desire comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the head. Desire comes from the heart. It's like, oh, this is what I want to experience in life. Because anything that it's you want. It's an emotional want, thing. It's an emotional yes, thing. Definitely. Anything you want in life, whether it's the fancy car, the beautiful wife, the uh, 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 exotic vacations, you know, ultimately at the end, it's the feeling that we want to experience, right? And then, and that feeling comes from the heart. It's not just in the head. So when we, you know, when we can get back into, I'm even having to do this with myself, get back into that place of imagination and going, what do I want to play with? What do I want that feeling to be? And then letting the desire come out of it. And then I go, oh, well, can I set that as a goal? Set that as a dream and then start creating the path so I can feel that all the time. And that's what I've been able to do for my speaking because I love the feeling I get when I'm able to share my story and my message. I'm like, that's the feeling I want for my life. That's the lifestyle I want for myself is experiencing that feeling. So that's what I'm going to go and do. And so if we can If that's the case, what are you doing in Reno? Shouldn't you be in LA? What are you doing in Reno? Listen, <laughs> we need to talk to the husband. We need relocation. We need, oh, we need a Reno. relocation for sure. Reno is is so fantastic. I love the openness here and the the mountains. I love being able to see my mountains, especially Mount Rose, where I can see the snow on the mountains. And then 
having Lake Tahoe right there, it's, it's just amazing. The people here are incredible. And thank, thank, thankfully for the technology that we have today, I can be anywhere in the world. And I love sharing my heart and my story with anybody in, in the world. And, um, you know, and certainly anybody who wants to listen, because I think universally, we do get caught up in, in the day to day. And we don't realize, first of all, the gift of life that we have, our very existence. And then second, that we actually can take that control. We can choose. We always have the choice to create the day that we want to experience. You know, can you take a moment? Anybody who's watching, listening, I challenge you. Have you written out the ideal day? What does that look like? And maybe it's a vacation type of day. You're like, okay, in retirement, this is what I want it to look like. Or it can be your ideal productive day. You know, when you show up to work tomorrow, what would make it a perfect day? Hey, Nick. And so, you know, dropping, dropping in those words, those images, what does that feel like? And then go and make that happen. You create the day that you want to experience. Don't you owe it to yourself to do that? Big time. I agree with that 100%. So, um, Your Highness, how do people find you? Oh, they can find me clearly here on Instagram, Living, Loving, Laughing Lee. Um, but really the best way to reach out to me to continue the conversation is to go to my website, upcyclecoaching.com. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this uh, time out of your busy schedule being with us this morning. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Hopefully we'll be able to do more. And Absolutely. you keep up the good work. Will do. And I'll come see you down in Las, Be uh, Las Vegas, LA. Anytime. Listen, we got a full studio. Whenever you're in town, let us know. We've got a full studio. Awesome. And I'd love to take you to Lake Tahoe. So come you on You got it. Talk to you soon. Say hello to the husband. I will. Cheers. You got it. Bye-bye.